All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week we're playing modern Hickory golf at Wequitonson Golf Club in Harbor Springs, Michigan. This is an absolutely gorgeous golf course in northern Michigan that I uh, had the opportunity to play with my buddy Andy Grow. This is the first of three courses we played in northern Michigan that you're going to see on the channel here. And uh, yeah, I can't, I got to say, this is probably the most beautiful course I've ever played and I'm really excited to show it to you today. So the most notable name behind this course's design is Robert Follis. Robert's one of the three Follis brothers, very famous in early American golf. We'll talk about his contribution to this course as we go. And uh, it's not the easiest course to get on, but it is public. We'll talk about those details too. Here's what's in the bag for this round, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. I'm using my primary hickory set. You see a brassy in the photo there, but I'm not using that anymore. Uh, but that is my Titleist True Field Ball that I'm still using. And here is the scorecard for the front nine at Wequi. That's what everyone around here calls it. It's a shorter course, but it's not easy. Number one's a par four, 349 yards. Toughest hole on the course to get things started. Here's my buddy Andy Grow. He goes by Hickories and Links on social media. Nice. Look him up. You'll find the details for that in the description. And here's yours truly. Starting things off with the driving iron. That's my go-to these days off the tee. I've ditched the brassy altogether. And uh, that was uh, kind of a quintessential start for me, pushing the ball right. Found myself behind this large hill here. Well, that was the right club to get myself back into play. That was the mashy niblick. Learned pretty quick that the rough here at Wequi is very lush. And uh, especially early in the day here with the dew, really had to get a lot of club head behind the ball to, to move it out of the uh, rough. You can also see here in this approach to the first green just how beautiful this golf course is. It's meticulously conditioned. You're hearing a lot of uh, landscaping noise right now around the, the clubhouse area. They were working hard, even though this was already in the off season for this course. So during the summer, it's private, but then in the fall, it opens up to the public. They're rolling really well. Yeah. <laughs> really well. Maybe too well. I mean, these are still wet and they're running like that. Yeah, we, we, learned, we learned fast that the greens were fast. No, not yet. <laughs> All right, moving on to number two, par four, 262 yards. A short one, but it's, a got, it's got a narrow fairway here, tree-lined on both sides. There's a nice play from Andy. Get himself out into the fairway on the right side. Andy and I were both using irons for the most part off the tee. I was using irons exclusively. I think Andy used his brassy once or twice. I got unlucky here again. You know, early in a round, that is my tendency to push the ball right. And that one got into the brush on the right side out of bounds and then I did that. I don't I didn't even think about that happening and it happened. Yeah, not a great start here, so, you know, uh, I'm I'm keeping track of if you're new to the channel You'll notice that the score I'm keeping track of is the net score, not the gross score. I like to keep track of net just to kind of see how I'm doing relative to my, my handicap in, in each round. And if I was keeping track of gross score, I'd have a lot of numbers up there. So yeah, this is my seventh shot already. Based on handicap, this is the most I could take on this hole anyway. Net double bogey. I'm really anxious about chunking these chips. Yeah, like any course you're playing for the first time, it's kind of an orientation session for both Andy and I. Wow. Figuring out what the proper pace was on these greens, figuring out how to navigate the rough, how to stay out of the rough, how to stay inbounds, in my case, on this hole. Do that after I get six strokes before I get on the green. 
Yeah, you're going to hear a lot of laughing in this round because uh, Andy and I were just having an absolute blast playing together on this course. Here's a, one of the first of many beautiful views from the tee box. I believe that's Little Traverse Bay in the background. Got lucky there, found myself in the fairway. Here's a shot of the beautiful clubhouse. I mean, honestly, every shot here, and I'm talking about every photo shot that I took on this golf course was picture perfect. And it was hard to figure out which ones to use um, just to kind of show the course because there weren't any bad ones. You know, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what I was trying to do. It still ran out. Hard to get close to that pin. All right, number four, four is the first par five. It's a short one, 401 yards, but you see it's got a fish hook approach that makes it tricky. Well, that's beauty. Nice, easy swing. That's how to do it, folks. Oh, yeah. If you watch my course vlogs, you know that when I play par fives, I put myself behind the eight ball right off the tee box very often. <laughs> and uh, not sure why. I think, well, actually, I do know why. I think it's because I'm trying to get a lot of yards off the tee knowing I'm using an iron and I end up over swinging. I'm working on it. That's okay. I'll take that one. There you see my Stewart and Jacoby golf bag on my vintage golf cart. A little promo there. Make sure you use the Hickory Hacker 23 promo code to save 10% on any product at StewartandJacoby.com. This is my least favorite club, so. Uh, if you want. Hold on. Did you have a sacrificial club? I got my little ambidextrous. Oh. <laughs> you can try it if you want. Oh, yeah, you don't do it. <laughs> I'm excited to see you use this. <laughs> yeah, we found this little kid's club out on the floor. <laughs> All right. You can go right here a little bit. <laughs> All right, I gotta yeah, yeah. gather myself here. <laughs> I don't know if I can bend over there. <laughs> I know, you're, you're working on that. There you go. All right, I mean, one. in certain most situations, that's all you're trying to do is just yeah, punch it out of trouble. It out. And that, that works pretty well for that. That was awesome. Yeah, that was real cool for me to see uh, somebody else using the ambidextrous putter I put together. I believe it's about 10 Great degrees shot. of loft on both the right and left orientation. So works well, left-handed, right-handed. You'll see me using it later in this round. And before I forget, I definitely want to mention Andy Bell. He's the head pro here at Weckley. He was a fantastic host to both Andy and I, and uh, really appreciate him uh, give, giving us the opportunity to play this course. So I mentioned it's public, but uh, the way that you book a tea time here in the off season is you call and talk to Andy and he sees if he can get you on. So they don't have any kind of online tea time system. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's how you go about trying to get a tee time here. And I think it's pretty easy in the off season, uh, cause it was for Andy and I, all right, moving on to number five, par four, 320 yards. Another short par four elevated T. That'll play. Starting to get a little warmed up now with the driving iron. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're running it. <laughs> uh, after yeah, a good drive, too. Me on that. Yeah, so my intention there was to, was to hit it crisp and get it in between the bunkers, just like that. Well played. Get up there. Stop it now. Sit down. Nice job. Thanks. Stop. Hang on. That's a good 
Ow. <laughs> yeah, I think for the first six or seven holes here, Andy and I were the only ones out on the course. I think everybody else that was out here are members that are kind of uh, lingerers into the fall. And from what Andy and I heard, the membership here at Wequi includes people who are also members at such elite courses as Augusta National, Pine Valley, and some others. And I only bring that up to say that uh, if you're a member of one of those elite clubs and this is where you have a summer membership, that says a lot about this golf course. Conditioning, playability, just the uh, recognition um, and reputation of this golf course among that elite membership is pretty cool. Very nice. Here's number six, par four, 335. Another kind of fish hook approach after this straight shot off the tee. I definitely picked the wrong spot to land my tee shot though. And I was trying something a little heroic here using my mashy off of my left foot just a little bit to try to pop it up over that tree. Well, I'm in a better position now going into the green. Yeah, that was all part of the plan, folks. Oh, I don't think I've hit out of rough like this yet today. No. So you're going to see some shots during this round, mostly approach shots with my mashy, where I push the ball right. And I've noticed in editing a lot of uh, videos from the end of the 2022 season that that... Uh, kind of crept in more often than not. So yeah, not quite sure what's going on with that club, but I'm currently accepting applications for a replacement. And uh, I've got a couple in mind in my shop that I'm gonna start working with uh, early 2023. And we'll see if we can, um, you know, find something a little more consistent. Get in there. Number seven's first part three, 161 yards though we actually decided to play it from the tips so that we got the vantage point of the elevated tee box. So this was about 204 that we were playing it from. Nice shot. Beautiful. Can't do much better than that for me. Cutting left a little bit to be desired, though, on this hole. All right, number eight, par four, 386 yards. I was getting a little overconfident with my driving iron swing. I tried to put a little too much on that one and uh, the push to the right came out again. It got me in jail. Tried using the driving iron to just punch a low runner, but I didn't quite get out of the trees. There's all kinds of rocks in here that would mess your clubs up. <laughs> I think I'm going to do left hand low or right hand low for this. Because I can't. This just feels. Well, it doesn't feel crazy to me. <laughs> I'm not going to get good time, contact that way. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I hit two rocks, but the ambi is still yeah. in That's shape. Two, two times this round, that close. Yeah. Time. See, I can't say enough about the ambidextrous putter. It has really come in handy for those shots where you don't want to risk damaging one of your better clubs. I think that club head cost me 15 bucks. Put the small shaft on it, and uh, yeah. I. I definitely recommend putting something in your bag. If it's not an ambidextrous putter, put something in your bag that you don't mind getting messed up, especially if you play in Society Hickory Golfer events where you got to play it as it lies sometimes, and there are situations where you might mess up a club otherwise. 
Thanks. So this is one of my first 18 hole rounds wearing the Fiddler Lynx Lens shoes, which is what I'm wearing today. And uh, yeah, they are super comfortable. You'll find details for picking those up in the description as well. Number nine is a par four, 323 yards. You hear the landscapers at work again. They were doing some work on a practice green here uh, when we were here in September, and I believe it's already been finished by now uh, in early 2023. But uh, that's all the noise that you hear around the clubhouse. Nice shot. Nice shot. Yeah, yeah it took a little bit off that swing, and that always helps. I think 85, 90% is probably the best swing with the driving iron for me. A nice par for me to wrap up the front nine and a good putt for Andy as well so here's the damage from the front nine 54 gross 43 net see if I can fix that on the back here's what I'm wearing sponsored by Fiddler shoes uh, this is one of my favorite hickory outfits to play in I like wearing pants now uh, you don't always have to wear knickers when you play hickory golf and uh, you find the details for all of those clothing items in the description here's the back nine at Wequi. And uh, yeah, I think you're gonna see more of the same beautiful holes on the back. Number 10's a par three, 142 yards. Easiest hole on the course. The contrast with the hardest hole on the course being number one. So a nice easy going start here to the back. Here's the Tom Morris Mashie. That was one of my better swings of the day with it. And speaking of nice shots, here's Andy's highlight of the round. Excellent shot. So not a bad start to the back nine for me. Number 11, par four, 351 yards. Now keep it going. Okay. And both Andy and I were flirting with the left side more than we needed to. I think the next time we play here, we'll definitely know not to be on that left side as much. Oh, dude, you're right in the middle of the fairway. I got really lucky there. It actually hit a branch on the left side and uh, rebounded back into the fairway. So here's the only time I used the Tom Stewart J iron in this round. Just didn't really find many opportunities or yardages to use this club. It's the right technique, but just put way too much on it. That's a pretty steep uphill. So I know that the greens pretty severely sloped back to front. But that was way too fast. It was also hurrying up now because we had some people behind us all of a sudden. So I decided to give Andy's putter a shot here. I believe this is his Alex Smith model made by Louisville Golf. 
currently no longer in production. <laughs> Alright, number 12, par 4, 375. Definitely find a lot of trees on this course on the on the later holes here. Hey. Good. Got the kick too. If you haven't noticed at this point, I'm pretty much just using my driving iron, my mashie, and my putter. And uh, it's a good lesson for folks. You know, you really only need maybe three or four clubs to play full 18 holes and really not feel like you're missing any clubs. Uh, I've been lucky in that I haven't been in the bunkers yet. I, you know, you definitely want to get use something to get out of the bunkers, um, like a specialty type club. But uh, yeah, you really don't need much to play uh, hickory golf. And um, yeah, the beginner sets that I put together, which uh, if you're interested, uh, drop me a line. But uh, usually the beginner sets that I put together for people are four That's to good. five clubs max and then a brassy. And there's another tree. Yeah, for some reason on this particular day, that shot was giving me a lot of trouble. That was a good play from Andy there to use his putter. That'll work. That first cut right in front of the green was trim enough that you could do that on most every hole. Yeah, I didn't take my time on that putt either. Missed opportunity there. Oh. That one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 14. First of two par fives back to back. 438 on this one. Short, but it's got this uh, dog leg right, and then it's uphill. That's the right angle you want to take into this dog leg. Both Andy and I found ourselves in that first cut of rough on the left side. Yep, <laughs> almost exactly the same spot. <laughs> and knowing what you know now about the rough, you just have to get out of here and, and uh, take your medicine. So I'm using the mashie even though it's not my longest club. This would have been a good J iron shot had I stayed in the fairway. Not too bad there. Well, that was another shot that I had to dig out of the rough. Put a lot into that one. There we go. Here's the short grass again. And that was one of my better approaches, even though <laughs> it came a little short. I don't think it could have been closer to staying. Bad though. And Andy and I put ourselves in nice position there. Yeah, it doesn't usually turn out that nice, but. <laughs> Great putt there from Andy. And this should be an easy cleanup for Bogey for me. Alright, so as you see the flag waving here, I want to point out the logo, a really fun logo, but it's actually designed by 
Jim Raymond, who was the lead artist of Blondie. You might know Blondie and Dagwood. He was the lead artist from 1950 to 1981 and was also a member here at Wekwetansen. This is Andy Bell, head golf pro, holding up one of the pieces of art that hangs in the clubhouse of Jim Raymond featuring Blondie and Dagwood. Actually, I think that just features Dagwood. But anyway, very cool alumni of this golf course, one of the more notable members over the years here at Wekwe. Here's the second par five, 425. It's a shorter one. I think that's going to be just fine. Got a bit of a blind tee shot here off the tee. And I wasn't quite sure what direction to go, but I was confident it wasn't that far right. And I was right. So I'm in the rough again. Good contact. Thank you. Get out of the rough. Get out of the rough. Man. Yeah, wasn't so lucky there. So another shot. Fortunately, I'm only a little more than 100 yards out from here. Ooh, are you on? I think I'm on the front at least. Yeah, good contact there. Nice. I think that's going to end up pretty good. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, that was a great shot from Andy yeah. right there. Okay. Good putt. Yeah, and a great up and down from Andy. Let's see if I can drop this for par. And I can. Thank you. Moving on to 16, par 4, 323. And uh, this is where the fatigue started to hit both Andy and I. another tree and I realized that I was putting way more effort into my swing than I needed to be. It's kind of what happens when I'm fatigued. I end up over swinging just so that I can feel the club. So there's not much you can find negative about Wequi in my opinion, but if you're looking for something to nitpick, I would suggest that maybe the Back-to-back -back par fives and this par 416 are kind of a lackluster uh, moment in the round compared to how stellar the holes are on the front nine uh, and the beginning of the back nine. Um, but then it all comes back on 17 when you get up to the tee box here. Uh, just an absolutely gorgeous par three signature hole here at the course, I think, and um, just reminds you that you're playing someplace really special. Great swing there from Andy. Sorry for the shaky camera work here, but he hit that up on the green. Now I ended up with the fried egg in the bunker for my first bunker shot. And I'm using the Walter Hagen Iron Man here to try to get out. And fortunately was able to do it with one shot. Not too bad of a par attempt there. And I'll take that bogey. Get in. Oh. Nice run at birdie there from Andy. And a short Good one par. to clean up his par. <laughs> so heading home, 18, par four, 292. I haven't talked much about Robert Follis, and I need to do that here because I got one hole left. Uh, so the story here at Wequi is that uh, it started out, I believe, as a nine-hole course in 1896. And then it wasn't until 1920 when a land acquisition occurred that the course was able to expand to 18 holes. And they tapped Robert Follis, and uh, Robert brought his, his famous brother James Follis with him to redesign the layout here at Wequi. And uh, between 1920 and 1927, there are a lot of changes that happened to this course. Uh, but from the best that I understand, and the best that Andy Bell understands, the course hasn't changed much since 1927, with the exception of some longer tee boxes, things like that. Drainage has also improved over the years as well here. Um, but this really is a golf course that uh, hasn't changed much in almost 100 years at this point. 
And um, interesting thing about these courses in northern Michigan is that they have really good historical um, architectural pedigree in that the phalluses were involved with courses up here. Um, but it's just n- until, you know, recently that uh, head pros like Andy Bell and others at other golf courses up here have done the research into the course's history and are documenting it for its members. So uh, that's one of the things that Andy Grow, my partner here in this round, uh, does is research historic golf courses in uh, Michigan, and that's part of why we're doing this trip together. Oh, no. So while there was a business component to our tour of some of the historic golf courses in northern Michigan, uh, this trip was mostly pleasure. And I have to say, if you can find someone who enjoys laughing at the bad shots as much as Andy does and as much as I do, you're going to have a great time playing no matter where it was, but especially if it's at a beautiful golf course like Wekwee. All right, let's see how I did on the back nine here. Ended up with a 48 gross, 37 net, so that's an improvement over the front nine. And my final score here was 102 gross, 80 net, which lowered my season gross average to a 105, and my net average stays the same at 82. So on behalf of Andy Grow, I want to thank you for watching this round at Wequi, and I hope you get a chance to come up here and play it yourself with someone fun. And you can find that somebody by joining the Society of Hickory Golfers, where you'll be connected with Hickory Golfers in your area. Go to hickorygolfers.com for more information. That'll do it this week, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here's one from the archive for you to check out. And as always, thanks so much for your support. We'll see you next time. Take care.